the walking tour for historic downtown Shipley and tonight we're going to throw in some ghost stories for y'all to keep your eyes from rolling back in your head over all the historic facts I'm going to throw at you. Now we're going to start here at the uh, monument for Colonel Chipley. He was given the honor of having this town named after him. It was first called Orange when it was built in 1882 and there were five men that went to Colonel Chipley to request that the town or the railroad come through here instead of its original route which was south of here. Um, the buildings on the back side of the square there, the, the largest one was one of the first dry goods. Um, Lucky yeah, Mr. Brakeman. Don't put me off your train. Please don't ever think that if you want to go looking for ghosts, you have to wait for nighttime to do it. We have pictures um, back at the museum of the courthouse and the jail before they were tore down in the daytime. And we went in um, and got pictures of plenty of, of different things going on and recordings of dragging sounds and that type of stuff. And so if something's haunted, it's haunted all the time. It doesn't wait for nighttime to come out. Sid Barfield was shot by Ike Whidden. Four shots rang out from this building and Henry Ferrier, Marshal Henry Ferrier came and arrested him. And he spent three years in jail and went through four trials. He was never found guilty even though there were four witnesses that told what happened and he was charged with premeditated murder. Sheriff Allen uh, was the sheriff when they actually released him on bail. For the first time in three years, he was released on bail. His wife had since died. And so he went to, they think, either Mississippi or Alabama, right in that area, and to visit some relatives, you know, his family's relatives, his um, wife's family. And while he was on this visit, he died, they say. Some say that they think it was faked, his death, burial, funeral were all faked so that he could get away. Others think maybe he died, but either way, he didn't spend any more time in jail. Look at yeah, Mr. Brakeman, don't put me off your train. The Gloria Potts, she owns this and the theater. When she's here, she said she reportedly hears footsteps a lot. She'll go upstairs to check to see if she, you know, what she's hearing, who's up there. There is a door from the rear, so she checks to make sure nobody has gained entrance to the upstairs and there's no one there. Uh, so she, she hears things going on. We don't know if it's J.O. and the family still walking around up there, but, but these are reports that the owner has given us. home again. The midnight special shine a light on me. We do have an apparition that is reported at this house by the owner. She stays here late doing cakes or used to. And there's a woman in a gray or blue dress that will come from the back of the house up the hallway. It's a large 10 foot wide hallway and she goes into the room on the east side of the house there in the front we call the blue room and so we're not sure if it's Miss Octavia or if it's Albert Myers' wife because both men died here in the house so somebody is still tending to someone in the front room and is um, occasionally seen we haven't been able to pin down a specific experience that that tells you when it's going to happen she just said on numerous occasions she would see her uh, coming up the hallway the tower is often referred to as miss molly's tower because when mr shoemaker was up there laying the bricks miss shoemaker came or miss molly came by going to school and the school used to be down to the west the big two-story um, building and they say he almost fell off the scaffolding to his death when he saw Miss Molly. She was just so beautiful. Uh, Miss Molly and Mr. Sheback got married and she later became a librarian when this was the library there. So she spent a lot of time in that building and it had a lot of special appeal to her. Um, in that building, they have a lot of strange things happen that we attribute to Miss Molly. The lights will come back on, uh, the computers will come back on. Uh, my experience was before the restoration of the building, I brought some engineers in to retrieve a light fixture. And they went up, two city workers, you know, two to, you know, one to hold the ladder, one to get the light fixture down. And they took the light fixture down and we were going back out the, the rear door over there and I looked up the hallway and the lights in the front of the room were on. So I walked into the hallway, hit the switch, turned the lights off, 
exited the building and came across the city workers and I said, who, who left the lights on up front? Who, who turned the lights on? And they said, Miss Odom, there's no power to this building. And I said, no, I just turned the lights off. They said, did you not just see us handling the bare wires taking the fixture down and I said yes but I just turned the lights off and they said no there's no power to this building so that was my own experience um, that I cannot explain so that's the story of City Hall they have a lot going on there if you want to go into the Chamber of Commerce and just hang around and see if you can experience something I'm sure they'd love to to have you I'm wearing now and I'm sure gonna leave the town this building used to be Dr. Steiger's chiropractic building, and the girls that worked there were having so many instances of um, noises in the back, or they'd hear the back door open and somebody walk in, get up, and there's nobody there. The back door was kept locked, so they were wondering who was trying to get in the back door. Uh, there's nothing there. So we set up a camera here on a Saturday morning, left it running all day during the day. Like I said before, if there's a ghost there, it's there day and night. And during that time, we got a lot of sounds. And if you're familiar with a video camera, it will autofocus when something passes in front of it. Now, there's nobody else in the building. It autofocused three times, change focus. So something passed in front of the lens that it detected that we could not see. I'm wearing now, and I'm sure going to leave this town. Next in line is going to be the Washington County News, probably one of our most haunted buildings in Washington County, in Shipley, I'll say. Uh, Mr. Sellers bought that building in 1940 and moved his uh, newspaper there. For a while, he was operating the newspaper out of the little big store. He had a space in there. In 1940, he bought this building. The people that work at the Washington County News said Mr. Sellers still comes to work. He has been seen coming through the back door he walks purposely, purposefully, purposefully toward the front of the building to what used to be his old office. When they don't see him walking there, they have experience coming back to their desk and the file drawers being open, their chair being moved, um, things that they reach for are gone. And so regularly you hear one of them say, Mr. Sellers came to work today because they still feel his presence there. I can't find a job. I'm tired of hanging round. Let the midnight special shine a light on So I asked Miss Cindy, you know what was going on, and she just told me footsteps, mostly around lunch. Not even at night, mostly around lunchtime. So within a couple weeks we came in and you know we took pictures and stuff and she's telling me, Dorothy, I just set up a display of boots on the wall. She said, I came in the next morning, they were all appended where she had not put them. And ever since then, she has noticed things are getting moved. And so, which is the same thing Anita Waits reported. So that's what's happening here. We don't know if it's a young boy that got electrocuted. The building is so old. Um, and like I say, doctor's offices did operate above. So there's no telling. The girls were not supposed to, you weren't supposed to swim in there at all, but at that time the girls wore long skirts. They had petticoats and, and long skirts and it was a hot summer day and so they wanted to kind of cool off in the lime sink. So they waited off in there. It was her and the little Callaway girl and then um, a third young lady and they drowned. They, they stepped off and uh, the water just kind of gave away like a shelf. And uh, one of the young boys, the, the brother of one of the girls, came home and was able to save the one young girl. He couldn't save his sister, and he did save Nettie. And they found the body of the, the Callaway girl. I believe her name was Tabitha. And they were able to find her body and pulled it out. But they never found Nettie's body. They searched for days. They dredged it. They brought in an underwater diver from around Pensacola. They even dynamited uh, the lime sink trying to get her body um, to come back up. The, uh, in subsequent years, they've actually put ping pong balls down in that lime sink and they have come back up out around fallen waters. So they think, you know, her body could have been snagged uh, down below in one of those channels. And so on the perfect uh, atmospheric night, uh, when the moon is full and, and everything is working out just right, they say you can see the apparition of Nettie uh, wandering the grounds of the lime sink. Back 
back in that time, they buried them pretty much with their valuables. Uh, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of um, the graveyard shift. Yeah. Have you heard of the graveyard People shift? go to the graveyard at night. Watch. No, it's when they watch so they don't break into it. Yeah, like they okay. walk, they have some people walking Actually, around looking. Actually, they used to have people that would get buried alive. So somebody had to be here all night. And they had a string mm -hmm. tied to their finger that come above ground that tied to a bell. And you worked out here all night long. And if you heard the jingling of the bell, you would know that that person was buried alive and you need to go dig them up. That <laughs> they woke up. So Miss Nepper, who got buried, did not have, they didn't, they didn't come up with this little until they, a few times of somebody being buried alive. And so the grave robbers back then would come along, newly buried people, and they'd want to see if there were any valuables in there that they could possibly take home with them. So Miss Nepper was buried above ground. They thought, well, this would be an easy target. We'd open this up. We don't even have to dig. We'll just open it up, get what we need, go our merry way. So they opened it up and went to rob what Miss Nepper had, and she sat up. Miss <laughs> Nepper went on to live 35 more years and have three more children. So the second time she was buried, she stayed. At the midnight special. Shine a light on me.